everybody! In part one of our How to Breed North American Colubrids videos, we taught you how to brumate snakes, or set snakes down into brumation for the winter. Today we're going to be showing you how to take care of your snakes during the brumation period. This, by the way, yeah. is Cheyenne. She is our rescued blue and gold macaw. She's a little bit naked because she plucks her feathers due to a previous bad home, uh, but she wanted to join us today. She's too loud, though. You're gonna go upstairs. Yes, you will, but we'll see how she does. Anyway, welcome to our brumation room slash our bull snake room. We basically just have this room cooled off during the winter time to around 57 to 58 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a little warmer than we would like for a North American colubrid being brumating down here. Ideally, you want them at about 55 degrees. So, it works. It's worked for us in the past, and so we just kind of keep it the way it is. It seems to be fine. Once your snakes are in brumation mode, like these guys are kind of sectioned off with this insulation to keep it as cool as possible and sectioned off as possible, um, but once they're in brumation mode, it's really easy to take care of them throughout the winter. We do a three-month brumation period, and during those three months, it's just a matter of checking on them once a week and offering them fresh water. So what we're going to do in this video is I want to show you some of the snakes in brumation and kind of show you how we would check on them once a week. In here we have, this is our past, oh sorry, this is our Het Snow Hognose Snake and he's very sassy. But as you can see in brumation they still do move around a little bit even though um, they are in a chillier environment. But since they move around so much less and so much, like this one's very cold to the touch, uh, you keep them in a slightly, typically, you keep them in a slightly smaller enclosure than what they would live in during the summer. For a lot of our snakes though, we just pull their bins out of the rack and we put them straight down into brumation just because it's, it's easier to keep them in the same bin. Anyway, I'm gonna try to get him under the cave. Go under the cave, yeah, then you're not in the way. Since they're not eating anything during the brumation period, they are not digesting any food and therefore there's no poop to clean up for the full three months since you have ideally cycled them and let them go about a month before without food before moving them down here. So all you have to do is check their water instead. And the water is just a matter of dumping it out, replacing it once a week, and then you put them right back into wherever they're sitting during the, the winter and you really don't want to disturb them much uh, at all. Really just enough to check on them to make sure they still look good body condition wise uh, because some snakes start to lose weight information if there's something medically wrong with them. So you want to observe their weight and their overall body condition every week as well as change their water. So while we're here, we're just going to check on a few of these snakes, see how they're doing. The next bin here is, ooh, the garter snakes. That's right. So let's see how we're doing here. Oh, <laughs> Why are you in shed in brumation? That's a weird time to shed. Okay, I haven't seen that before. But who else do we have? We've got two, oh that's right, just the two males in here. But they're hiding and they're just gonna stay, this one is gonna stay in his cave the entire time. That one moves around a little bit more for whatever reason. These are the females brumating for the winter. We have our red-sided garter snake in here and we have the other red-sided under that cave, also in shed. That maybe, is maybe garter so, snakes do that. Maybe this is the first a, year we've really brumated garters. That's true. Maybe it's a garter snake thing. Huh, that's so strange. Anyway, they all look good. And then I'm just going to change the water quick. We do have a couple of hog noses. These are two male hog noses together in brumation. They're moving around a little bit more than the other ones were. Now you typically don't want to cohab hog nose snakes. You keep one in each enclosure, but when it comes to brumation, that kind of throws that rule out the window. You can put snakes together in brumation because they are in, at such a cold temperature. They don't want to eat anyway, so they're not going to go after each other and they're not moving very much, so they're not going to bother each other either. But if you are going to cohab during brumation, you keep the same species together, of course, and the same sex. We have cohabbed our bull snakes and our hognose snakes and our rat snakes together, same sex, of course, uh, for several years and we've never had an issue. Who do we have brumating in here? These are our bigger snakes brumating. We've got, whoa, oh, he did not like me touching him. I've got a tail buzz going. There's Buck, our scaleless rat snake. I'm sorry, dude, I'll let you go back to sleep. I know I woke you up. This is our locking mechanism, by the way. I'm quite proud I came up with this because without it, uh, snakes were able to push this open from the inside somehow and escape. So we just have a little piece of plastic ring that fits perfectly right there and it holds it in. In the bull snake racks, we have a lot of our bigger snakes brumating. Bull snakes, of course. 
So let's just check on a couple of them. And here we have, how are you doing? Oh, here's our albino. Looks like she's gotten comfy for the winter. She'd probably still eat though if I offered her food because bull snakes will eat anytime, anywhere. So I am gonna go through and change out all of their waters, but you know what that looks like, so I'll just do it off camera. But let's check on, we can do Brad. Sure. How are you doing? Oh, she's oh, in her cave. You're awake. When I checked on you last, you were out. You were asleep, Brad. I'm not here to give you food, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's cold in there. You might see that we still have the thermostat on, and the uh, this is only connected to two heat panels, and those panels belong to two snakes we are not roommating this year. They're down here. We have Peanut and Loki, who is our black-tailed Kribo, who looks like he's slithering away right now. Uh, but they still have heat hooked up to their bins, which is why we still have a thermostat running. Yeah. So we've now checked on all the snakes down here in the basement or in our brumation room. And there are there's one more species of snake, though, that's a little different than the others, and that would be our western fox snakes. They need it colder than what we can provide in just our basement. They need it instead of 57, 58-ish like it is down here, they need it closer to about 45 to 48 degrees. So we actually bought, and we mentioned this in our last video about brumation, but we bought a wine cooler and set them up in there for brumation. So let's go check them out. All right, we are upstairs now, and next to me here is the new wine cooler we just bought. It's our first time using it this year, so uh, it's been an experience. This cover is the wine cooler, actually. So we had it covered up because information you want these snakes to be in uh, as complete darkness as possible, because in the wild, they're gonna find crevices or caves, or they're gonna go under rocks or logs below the frost line, even in big piles of leaves, to brumate uh, naturally. So in those types of environments, it's very dark, which is why you wanna keep them in the dark in captivity during brumation. But inside here, oh, she's actually moving around for once. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, so we have two fox snakes, a female down here, and a male up here. Let me just, I can take them out temporarily. I'll take out the male. We currently have this set at 44 degrees Fahrenheit and we're monitoring it with a temp stick. This isn't a sponsor. We use the temp stick that um, connects to our phone and gives us updates every half an hour on what temperature it actually is wherever we place this. And it gives alerts if it gets too high or too low. So it's kind of nice to be able to monitor this wherever we go. And inside of their enclosures here, this is our male fox snake. Wow. Now at these lower temperatures in the 40s they don't move around very much at all looks like I woke him up but he was sound asleep until I took him out here and they don't move around much so that's why you it's okay to keep them in a smaller enclosure during the winter because in the wild they're gonna be crammed in some crevice probably with four other fox snakes so they don't need a lot of space when they're sleeping during the winter however they do need air and if you think about it this is an airtight uh, container, so once a day we open up the door just for air circulation and we close it again. And uh, that's why we have this up in our bedroom, actually, so that we don't forget to open the door once a day. This is actually how a lot of uh, breeders of other types of North American reptiles, too, will brumate their reptiles. We know a guy who brumates his turtles in a fridge over the winter, and he, again, just once a day opens it up for some air circulation, and that's all he has to do throughout the winter. If you live in a warmer state, this is definitely the way to go when it comes to brumating your own reptiles for breeding purposes because your basement, unless you're up here in the Midwest, probably isn't going to co get cold enough for, uh, for for them to sit at. A lot of you Texans apparently don't even have a basement and I don't know how life would be without a basement. I've, that blew my mind when I mentioned that and saw the comments of that video. Anyway, so again at this point it's basically just checking in on them once a week, opening this door once a day if you do the wine cooler or refrigeration method, and make sure they have fresh water, make sure their body condition is fine and that they look okay, but you just leave them alone for three months. It's honestly the easiest part of the whole breeding cycle when it comes to snakes. Well I'm going to cover these guys back up and I'd like to thank, no Cheyenne, I'm not playing with you. This isn't your toy. She loves, she loves towels. But thank you to our Patreon backers for supporting our channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video, which is part two of our How to Breed Colubrid series. Next up, we'll be waking the, them up from brumation. You can learn about what we do or what our process is. So uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll see you next time. Go dancing. Such a lame dance. Good girl! Yay, you went dancing! Just realized I've been hunched over this whole time.